Okay, and you go. So, uh, hello everyone. Uh, nice to see you here on my uh, little presentation about SUSE Manager 5 and its containerization story. Before starting, I would like to point out that there is by Andrzej Holacek because that means that this is my, I would say, personal observation. Uh, the slides were reviewed by others, sure, but still this is some, something from my own uh, perception and may not be completely 100% accurate what's really uh, what's going on. Uh, so first, who am I? Uh, my name is Andrzej Holacek. Uh, usually I'm part of the factory team by Andrew Petros channel, but otherwise in Esuma I'm part of the Esuma hexagon squad. Uh, and uh, of course, so emails over there and on, on GitHub and everywhere, I am with this cryptic AAA and NT, which is rather unique on the internet. Uh, because this was not uh, sole effort, uh, of course. Uh, so this is the, our containerization uh, task force. It's my uh, how I call it. Uh, plenty of them are from Hexagon Squad, uh, from the SUSE manager. So we have Cedric who leads lead that. Uh, and Mikel and, and Ricardo for architect. Why those three are separate? Because they, they did like 85, 90% of the work. The rest of us were just uh, doing some smaller tasks. And, and then of course with the QA, uh, big help from them uh, going into the, to re, to the release and uh, helping it. Uh, so with this, this is what we worked for. Uh, I don't know everyone who knows about uh, SUSE Manager or not, so let's see. Let's talk about what SUSE Manager actually, actually is. So SUSE Manager is kind of uh, all the product. Originally, it uh, was split from or forked from Red Hat Spacewalk. Red Hat Spacewalk. Uh, we do uh, patch management. Uh, we provide repositories for uh, mirrors, uh, mirror of repositories for RPM-based distributions, uh, Debian-based, uh, so Ubuntu Debian itself. Uh, so there's plenty of plenty of this. Uh, we do an image building, similarly like OBS, but uh, not not as complex. Uh, so we built uh, anything what Kiwi can build, and we have our own build host and so on. We pro out AutoYast files with the, with the other tools uh, which we integrate. We have the automated deployment server either through AutoYast or our own uh, for a retail perspective for retail customers. Um, we also take track of some inventory. So you have a nice web UI where you can set, set whatever you have on your premises and so on. We also provide a salt master. We, we use salt for configuration management and for uh, some files deployment. And even the automated deployment using the salt boot from retail is based on salt. So we also integrate all of this. And there are much, much more things like uh, vulnerability reporting and uh, you mentioned configuration management and, and so on, so on. So it was, it is quite a big uh, product. So this means that uh, SUSE Manager is also almost four and a half million lines of code. Um, majority of this, I did not include it, is, is from in, in some form of XML data. Uh, but we have 350,000 lines of code for Java, we have a Python inside, we have, you can see, 170,000 lines of pure SQL. We have JavaScript, TypeScript, all of these things. Uh, when I was looking into the history, uh, I don't have the complete history on from the spacewalk times, because the first comet you can find is uh, in 2008. Well, this is the second one. The first one was test comet. The second one added 4.8 million lines of code. <laughs> uh, so this is the, the history I can see. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, of course, being this older product uh, and with such a large scale uh, of features or functionality, um, we sometimes or many times fail to update all of these, our utilities and dependencies. So we have uh, still Half of our web UI is still based on struct, Apache struct, which was end of, end, end of life uh, in 2013. 
We have a Lucene search engine, which I think was AOL in 2009 and so on. So uh, quite a long list of some older dependencies. And again, there is much more because of all of the other pool dependencies. Uh, what also uh, SUSE Manager is, in architecturally speaking, we have uh, SUSE Manager server, the central piece. We have SUSE Manager proxy for localized deployment and caching and so on. We have a SUSE Manager retail branch server, which is exactly the same as the SUSE Manager proxy, except targeted on for a retail customers where they want to have some different subscriptions and licensing and so on. So technically it's the same as proxy, but it's a legal exercise. And then we have a uni and uni proxy. Now, uh, uni is a part of being a, a salt lake somewhere in, uh, in uh, Argentina, I think. Uh, uni is an upstream for SUSE Manager server. Uh, when we forked, uh, really forked from the Red Hat uh, satellite or spacewalk, uh, we wanted to have upstream organization or some upstream uh, and uh, for some uh, reason we didn't want to have uh, SUSE in the name or, or what, like open source manager. I don't know, maybe it was considered, but eventually uh, we chose so to, to be like to more point on our salt uh, config management usage. So we uh, selected the name of uni. So nowadays, Uni is the upstream. It's, and, uh, it's using OpenSUSE uh, uh, resources, for, so it's built on open build service, but it's not affiliated so far. There are some movements to affiliate it with OpenSUSE organization, but not yet. And open, uh, Uni proxy, basically the same as SUSE Manager proxy. Uh, why I am mentioning this? Because uh, throughout the containerization, we everything did first for, on <laughs> Uni. So there were some decisions about naming and so on, and uh, that, that reflects the Uni uh, upstream and not just uh, SUSE Manager itself. What I am missing here is that we uh, chose when you have when you have a higher scale, we chose to do. Um, Vertical, uh, horizontal scaling, not vertical, uh, no, vertical scaling, not, yeah, vertical scaling. So we have multiple SUSE managers, you can have multiple SUSE managers on different layers which manage other SUSE managers. In that case, we call it hub scenario, but it is uh, not relevant to containerization story, so I did not include it here. Um, how it looks like, we have central SUSE manager, we have monitoring host somewhere extra, we have build host extra, you can have clients con connected directly to SUSE manager, or you can have proxies and then client uh, connected through them, or retail brand servers, uh, proxies and so on. So just this is how it generally looks like. Um, why we started to, to do this? Um, so this is the official reason why we started to do this. So we aim to operate with containerized environment and uh, be a modular and enhance portability and so on. Uh, this is what is in SUSE Manager 5.0 interlock. Um, why we also do this is that uh, we, from our view, is that we want to, for a long time, we wanted to do some refactoring, but the refactoring is not just, you know, you can't sell it like, hey, here's the new version, it's refactored, but otherwise it's just exactly the same thing. So containerization allows us some refactoring and also add a new product. It's also a famous thing when, you know, uh, works on my machine, so we ship, ship what works on my machine. So there is, um, in the container image, of course, you have uh, basically the same copy you are testing you know, interference with package, it, package installations and so on. Um, we wanted to have easy deployment, which we thought will, will come with containerized, containerized uh, products. There is also some certain cool factor. Uh, it, when we started it, it was, uh, it was not brand new, but it was like uh, something new for us, so it was cool to work on. And uh, uh, what was already mentioned in the morning, uh, we also took the opportunity to drop some features we do not want to support anymore, uh, like uh, this transactional stack and, and, uh, and others. And not, not only that, we also wanted to limit 
what our users can do with our product. I will touch that again later, but uh, the, we ship many dependencies which provide many features, uh, but not all of them we uh, support. Like we would, not all of them we test and reliably work. Uh, so we do not want to everything to be uh, available. So this is also a bonus, bonus, bonus point. Now to the actual containerization, how we did it. So we opted to start with containerizing the proxy server, to gather some experience, and then we go uh, to do the whole server uh, container. Uh, we also opted to first go just to the uh, Podman thing, Podman containerization, and only uh, do the uh, Kubernetes uh, later. Um, that was the plan. We at the end to ease some development, did borrow both of them in parallel. Uh, but there is uh, a question about supportability, and currently the, with the 5.0, only Podman will be officially supported. Uh, Kubernetes is like uh, for experimentation, and it will be supported uh, hopefully in 5.1. So let's first uh, take take a look what, uh, with the proxy. So the reasons I mentioned there is some learning opportunity. Uh, learning opportunity because at this time, two years ago, or maybe almost three, uh, when we started, there were many, uh, not many people who knew uh, what everything uh, the containerization is. Like you knew that there is some uh, kernel namespacing and so on, and what technically container is, but how to use it, how to build it properly, how to work with, uh, how to deploy it, everything, we have no no idea. Uh, really, how to do it, especially even with uh, with Kubernetes. At that time, I think we have we were like one or two people who even deployed anything on Kubernetes at least once. The rest was completely uh, tabula rasa. There was also questions how to release it. You know, we were used to uh, packages, how to release uh, images, and what we didn't know it. So we wanted to do this for a proxy, uh, because with proxy it was also well as risk. Proxy itself uh, is kind of a dumb, dumb, uh, dumb device or dumb stack. There is no too much logic. So uh, as soon as, as long as we uh, kept the interface the same, we could use, we could run both of the uh, proxies in parallel. So if something didn't work out, out right on the containerized proxy, we could just uh, use it. So we opted this this scenario. Um, this is the architecture, something like draft how the proxy looks like. We have the square things are on the proxy, the circles are our uh, input outputs. So we had some HTTPS for Apache proxy, we have a salt broker, so in, uh, we have TFTP server for auto installations. Uh, we had uh, salt minion and SSH gateway for uh, when you have internal network and want to con control the client behind this internal network, which is not reachable directly. We have some SSH gateway the Suma server can use. And this this is what we had. So we took out. We decided that it will, we will create a container for each of the individual service uh, and. We, with the salt minion, the salt minion was used on the proxy to, to manage it, to just uh, apply states and manage the proxy. Uh, so we did, didn't need it anymore on the containerized uh, proxy. So we decided that this one will be dropped. Again here, uh, five containers. Uh, we, create, we opted to create a single pod. Uh, for Podman, which will share the net, of course it will share the networking. Uh, and uh, uh, we also led with this with uh, Kubernetes, uh, Kubernetes networking, how to do it properly, especially with the, uh, with the TFTP, UDP ports, and so on. Now you ended up, we ended up with five containers and needed to have way to how, uh, way how to manage it from a customer perspective. So it's not like uh, a couple of pages in documentation. Uh, we prepared, uh, we opted to use a system D to service these Podman containers. Create a so we created a package which packaged these uh, system, uh, system D services. And in documentation was install this package, generate this configuration from the uh, from the Suma server, extract it, and uh, 
run the services. So that was the plan, that was what we provided, and that was what we released in 4.3 maintenance update one, or maybe even GA, 4.3 GA. The funny thing here is that immediately as we re uh, relieved this, we had to change, change uh, things because uh, originally the, gener the configuration we generate on the Suma server for the proxy, it was a zip, zip archive. And we took the zip archive, moved to the Slee Micro, and Slee Micro doesn't have unzip and anything like that. So at the end, we, at next maintenance update, we switched to tar uh, gzip to tarball. So we don't force people to either use tool toolbox or restart. Uh, so the first lesson learned is check wherever your proxy will be running with, if you have all the tools. Uh, and uh, yeah, we also uh, prepared some Helm chart for Kubernetes, uh, Kubernetes deployment. This was also first thing, to, uh, first interaction with with Helm charts for our team. Uh, challenges: what we have, the learning was quite uh, quite a big, especially at. Uh, I not I'm not sure if it's still the case. I did not check, but the networking documentation of Kubernetes was completely something else with that we wanted. Everything was focused on, uh, you know, uh, basically L7 uh, routing. Some uh, only if everything based on uh, uh, SLI or something like you have this uh, path go there, you have this path go there. What we needed uh, uh, TCP ports mapping and UDP for for uh, TFTP container and so on. Uh, so getting the first iteration of the network of the Kubernetes network setup that was quite a challenge. Now, I, th I think now it's, it's better. We also, the, the Cedric I mentioned who was leading this project also took this opportunity and during this time, he also became a certified Kubernetes administrator and developer, uh, which was, by the way, uh, I think it was uh, even funded by Su uh, Suze to some uh, training budget or something like that. So uh, that was good. Also, we were looking for a Docker file best practices and so on, how to write it. It was changed many times, so it's still an uh, uh, ongoing process, but uh, we have at least something uh, how, uh, how uh, releasable and uh, some good thing. And of course, how to release all of things. The release procedure, we had to adapt all the uh, RPM tools we have to also release a containerized, uh, containers or images, so our release engineer, engineers will not be completely suicidal with this. <laughs> and uh, uh, next uh, challenge here was a retail brand server. Now you might say, hold on, I said the retail brand server is the same as the proxy, but, and that is true, but the retail brand server has a different Usage in a con, in a in a retail scenario when you have a salt boot, we were a heavy user of salt um, salt states on this uh, brand server, but we dropped uh, salt minion, so there will be no more. You, there is no possibility to 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 do the state applications. So this was quite uh, quite a challenge to get right. We need to fundam fundamentally change uh, the, the underlying architecture. The TFTP container no longer has a TFTP server. Instead, it has a TFTP to HTTP gateway. This is based on some uh, older Facebook project when they had this, the base thing and we just wrote the wrapper using this uh, FB TFTP uh, library. But this is quite interesting uh, piece that uh, because with this, you can you also route all of these uh, all of these HTTP through the squid, so you have automatically some caching and so on. So, at the end, I think it's quite nice, but it was uh, quite a quite a challenge to do this, and also uh, impacts our customers quite quite in a in a big way uh, because it changed how they deploy their images, and they needed to uh, to adapt to it. But this with this. Uh, we were basically done with the proxy, released it, and uh, we started to work on on a SUSE manager. Uh, SUSE manager is a completely uh, different uh, beasts with uh, for some other reasons. Uh, if you look 
for a high level architecture of the SUSE manager server itself, there are some big things. Uh, we have two Java processes for Tomcat Taskomatic. We have database extra. We have Salt Master. We have some Apache as a, as a uh, reverse proxy and with other other SGA scripts uh, included. So it looks like to, it is easily you know you just take all of these ping, things and then just uh, package it up. Uh, so we were looking into two options how to do it because. Something in our back, in, the, in our minds, was telling us that it will not be as easy. But so, first thing, uh, first approach would be to just do co uh, copy what we did to proxy. Uh, everything so is neatly separated. Just uh, spent uh, some really created uh, the uh, containers, and then just spend the rest of the year trying to make it everything, to fix it and make it work. Or we will create one big container with a, based on the system, based on the init, BCI init container. And as soon as possible, create some minimal viable product, which will somehow works, and then spend the rest of the year just trying to carve out as many things and, and to make it, uh, and try to make it work. Uh, when we looked into the SUMA uh, in the, like more closely, yeah. This uh, this graph is a nonsense. This is only here to impress you that it's like overwhelm you that it's like just different things. <laughs> but uh, yeah, because they are missing many of things. But if I add everything, it will be completely unreadable. The point was that there was a massive amount of some interconnect interdependencies between these uh, all the tools where they some of them communicate using X, XML RPC, some of them are using uh, files to communicate between those processes. Uh, some of them had uh, uh, different uh, storage locations, locations uh, many of uh, different volumes you would have to have, uh, you know, uh, packaging problems and everything. So we chose, when we looked more deeply into what exactly is this our SUSE manager thing, we chose to do the one, one image. Uh, that was, that was ever the, the final decision. So we started with, uh, nowadays with BCI init for a SUSE manager for uni, we have our, we I think just started on leap, uh, and then uh, we add uh, some custom init things here. Uh, we wanted to reuse from the old product as much as possible uh, because uh, well, as soon as you look into rewriting something, it's just a, it is just this, uh, this uh, you know, uh, on a YouTube, the old uh, video when someone, when the light bulb broke and he's going to buy the new one, then he find out that his car is not starting and so he starts repairing car and he is looking for tools and uh, and this cupboard is broken and so on. So because here, as soon as you start rewriting one thing, you will notice, okay, uh, the setup scripts, they are uh, written in uh, parallel. Maybe we don't want to have a parallel anymore because this is last piece of parallel there. So we will rewrite it here. And you know, maybe we don't need this Python script because it's over there. So we didn't want to go to this rabbit hole of rewriting all of these beginnings, uh, all of these setup scripts. Uh, we just get rid of some uh, just set up, set up uh, things because we don't want to have a UI, we don't need or uh, to have a UI to configure a container uh, like during the deployment. And we just created some different uh, mechanism for it. But, uh, there are, but the rest is preserved as much as, uh, as possible to ease the development and uh, surprises. Uh, of course, of course, the plan was also to adapt uh, the uh, test suite and pass the validation as soon as possible, and then, uh, if time permits, and we will, it will be working. We wanted to have a separate um, container, so this is what this was what we planned. Uh, what we expected uh, that will be uh, an issue. Uh, I already mentioned massive amounts of different config tools, something we needed to be to, to preserve on the uh, during the you know, term, uh, update of image update or restart. 
So we know the database, we know the RPM will be need to be outside some configuration data, Im built images, and so on. When we did the early preliminary work, it suggested 25 volumes. At the end, I think it was more or less the same, uh, but uh, we needed to do some rewrites uh, uh, because of some refactoring and so on. And as soon as you touch the spec files, there is always need for some migrations and so on. So we knew that the volumes will be uh, quite a big challenge. We expected the challenge with uh, you know, fully qualified domain names uh, because uh, it is, uh, we've specified uh, to all the toolings, underlying toolings, you know, Saltmaster had to, uh, Salt Minion had to connect uh, somewhere. Uh, uh, all of these, the auto installations have, have this, all of this. But uh, of course, you can't support, you, you don't uh, generally call host name in the container and get the correct FQDN, uh, which was done before. So we, need to, we expect that there will be plenty of spaces where we need to, to rewrite this. Similarly, with the SSL team, SSLing, uh, it works with uh, Podman. With, with Podman, we still have SSL. Uh, with Kubernetes, you usually have some uh, you know, uh, SSL endpoint, like for a, for a, a ingress controller and something like that. The funny thing is that uh, in the 4.3, we removed non-SSL usage. We removed it from Git, uh, from uh, from uh, code base, so you, it was not possible to set it up uh, not using SSL. So uh, we removed it, and half a year ago we were added again, uh, reverting old commits because we needed to have uh, no SSL usage on uh, Kubernetes uh, clusters and so. So again, the uh, story of of development: you remove one thing, and a year later you are re-adding it. And similarly with time zone, uh, we identified that there will maybe some problems because the container you don't have it by default. You need to either mount it uh, in volume or specify it somewhere, some different way. Uh, and the migration. It was, uh, for a long time, it was open question how to do this migration. Uh, whether we want to migrate on the same machine or we, we force people to, diff, to use different machine. There was also a problem that 4.3, SUSE 4.3 was based on SLEE 15 SP4, so you also need to upgrade the host uh, system if you go through the online migration on the same host and so on. Uh, and also uh, how we will do this, like run just the container and it will do this, or, or what's the, or the documentation, so on. Uh, so that was, that was open questions for uh, expected migrations, expected uh, challenges. Uh, before going to the actual challenges, on top of these, <laughs> uh, let's go for how do we, uh, at the end, did the, the implementation. Uh, we introduced a new tool, uh, which is called Unit Tools. Based on, the pro, uh, based on the upstream project. Uh, this is something, this is a collection of tools uh, where you, in, which you install on the host system. Uh, in, oh, yeah, I forgot to mention. Uh, the host system, the support host system, how we, it will be uh, uh, documented or how it will be provided to a customer is currently a uh, SLE Micro 5.5. Uh, we were also, I think the, the SL, SL Linux Micro 6 was not uh, considered because of missing, uh, I guess, PowerPC architecture, which will be added in 6.1, and we needed PowerPC, so that's why uh, SUMA, SUSE Manager 5.0 will, uh, will be by default installed on SUSE, uh, or SLE Micro 5.5. And uh, on, the, on top of this, we need to install these tools. Uh, these tools are in Golang now, so we are more in line with Kubernetes for some, I guess. And uh, it is kind of a blending of traditional world and containerized, containerized world. I know that there are different approaches, like, uh, I don't know, when you have, uh, for example, an XCloud AIO, they, you pass the, the Docker socket to, to the container and it will auto-configure itself. Um, 
we didn't draw, go this way because first, uh, I, I think at the time we didn't know about this thing, and second, it doesn't work with uh, Kubernetes set uh, by default. So we opted to have separate binaries or separate programs outside of containers, which will set up these containers. Um, and we started with the first tool, which is uh, something for administration. That we, uh, this tool is mandated to be installed on the host system where the container will be running. The uh, notion or the requirement that this tool has to be on the host uh, also helps us with some of the things like uh, interacting with the container uh, directly. Uh, this thing is for installing, for migration, uh, for upgrades, uh, for, for systems uh, management on the, on, on the host. Uh, it can install both Podman or Kubernetes, so if, it, if you are on a Kubernetes cluster node. Uh, it can, uh, it does the migration, that means uh, you specify, the, the migration is done in a way where you have completely new uh, container as host. The, your, your existing SUSE Manager 4.3 is running somewhere else, and the migration uh, SSH to this old host, are, uh, stop all the services, rsync all things back to, the, to, the, uh, to this host, to the correct con uh, containerized volumes, uh, container volumes, and so on, and configures everything. Uh, one note, uh, in the init container, I specify that we are basing uh, on the PCI init and uh, your leap uh, for uni. Uh, we have uh, two, two, uh, two images. We have the init image, and then we have the SUMA image. Uh, we have this imi init image for both. So we are, we are building, we have init image on both of BCI init or on top of leap. And in this uh, init image, we are uh, using, pre-creating users with hard-coded UIDs and GIDs. Uh, this is explicitly to allow all these uh, migrations to have correct users and, and uh, stable user names, uh, stable user IDs and uh, group IDs. Uh, so when you look into our init image, it's like a web view, www user is like 10,000, 50, something like this, all these high numbers. Except Postgres, Postgres we opted to 999 because the upstream Postgres container is using 999 for, a, for a Postgres users. So it's a side note. Uh, yep. So when you install and migrate, you have uh, in Suma 4, 5, you have all the stables, you, uh, gits, uh, ID, UIDs and gits and so on. Uh, in the Podman, we still opted to manage using the system the services, but now this system the services itself are generated and managed by this MGR tool. It's no longer a package, some separate package with just service files, now it's generated by this tool. Um, the reason for this is that it's uh, the, the idea was to be as much user friendly as possible here. Uh, so you have now one command which will do all this thing. Uh, in, in, uh, the same is, for example, with the authentication, authenticated uh, uh, registry, like we have registry to uh, When you have a uh, registered uh, containerized host, it automatically logged in you using your credentials. So you don't have to do worry about this. You, you are registered container host, you call my MGR ADM install Podman, I have to install everything, authenticate you to the registry, configure everything. So it's much easier than it was, uh, it was before. Um, yeah, similarly with the upgrades, with the upgrades uh, we are using the versioned images for a container, uh, containers. Uh, so it's not always the latest, that's for Uni, but for Suma uh, 5, it's the specific versions, and so that we have to have upgrade command, which will, uh, which will check the, new, the newest release and modify, uh, modify the services, restart it, and uh, all of this. We, this is used also for PTF, when you have a PTA, PTF container image. Uh, similarly, just change uh, the, uh, the tag. And yeah, for support config, 
support configs. Uh, so we have some something way uh, some way to generate it. So you can you call just MGR IDM support uh, config and it will gather all the all the data and so, uh, store it on the containerized host. Uh, next tool we have MGR CTL. Uh, this is for day-to-day uh, -day usage, like for API and so on. It was that was the original idea, uh, but you know uh, we also added uh, some tools to work directly with uh, containers, containers like uh, Copy and Exec and so on. So uh, it is not like completely clean separation. Uh, for this tool, you also either it is installed on the containers host or you have uh, sockets uh, enabled on Podman, so you can con work remotely. But future in future, uh, we have I think like four or five uh, command line tools on SUSE Manager 4.3, which are actively used, and we want to get rid of all of them and re-implement this all in this command. So the, there is a huge potential to, for, a, for a work here. Uh, and since we were working on these MGR tools or unit tools, we also get rid of the 4.3 uh, containerized proxy systemd package. Now we have MGR, MGR Pixie. Which is a good name if you deal with PCI booting all the time, so uh, you, you get clear, you know, what you are talking about. So MGR Pixie uh, is for managing a proxy. Uh, it's installing it for, for Podman, for KDS, uh, and Kubernetes, and also do the start, stop, and everything. And uh, it should also do the upgrade, but so far we do not have upgrade implemented yet. So this is something we need to do in, I don't know, two days or something like that, because uh, in three days it's a freeze, I think. Yes, two days. <laughs> yeah. So in two days we have a feature freeze for five. Uh, so okay, so actual challenges. Packaging. And the packaging was a massive challenge here. Um, we have uh, packages, something which do some good things, like when you uh, up install or upgrade this package, it do the migration of data, and the migration of data is stored in slash var. Okay. So which slash var you don't have when you are building the containers. Uh, all, all of these configuration upgrades, uh, on, even on ATC everywhere, when you separate, completely separate the build system, building step, which is done for a container image, and then the actual, actual runtime, uh, you, you can't do my config migrations on the post scripts, uh, or you can't do it easily. Uh, so um, because of all the different dependencies we have, we are pulling, uh, this, is, this was a massive challenge. Uh, also, our own Java code base was doing this, was all over the place. Uh, so we needed to do uh, quite a big refactoring, move uh, many, uh, many files from slash, SR, slash SRV to slash user, so to be more compliant with, uh, or more uh, useful in the containerized thing. And uh, uh, we also, uh, with the configuration files, we also uh, come up with a completely separate tool called Uni Config Files Synchronization. This thing is to help uh, with uh, this uh, config file upgrade. So on the tools, we are not, we don't have any 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 leverage on. So this tool is running during the con uh, Docker build. You call it with the init uh, option, and this will take all the in config files. Uh, as specified in the RPMs, copies into them separate directories, create the checksums of these files. And when you are running, when you are starting the service, uh, our SUMA5, then it is running with the since command, and it will go, it will go through all of these files, config files, compare the uh, comp uh, check the postscripts if there are any of, on these uh, RPMs, and if there is any change on from the config file coming from volume and config file coming from an uh, image and compare it and, and uh, uh, it is not resolving conflicts, if I am not mistaken, but it is doing the RPM save and uh, this thing, so you can resolve it later. But uh, this was uh, 
quite uh, needed because uh, you know as soon as you saw, say, save the config files in the volumes uh, and RPM is doing upgrades and post scripts, you, you just uh, have to have some workarounds for this. We have an issues with Selenux. Uh, in a, a particularly in a migration scenario where uh, the, uh, the SSHing from the container to the to this, the other uh, tool was all frequently denied by Selenox. Uh, at the end, we just opt to not not have uh, Selenox and when running the migration container. Uh, yeah, it took a week, some or so, because of many of us or none of us had a uh, Selenux experience. So learning about Selenux, how to find, uh, how to mitigate it, we came up with some uh, our policies. But at the end, it was more complex, and the migration scenario is running running for like one hour, two hours. So we were okay by security. Then we can uh, have just this migration container running without. Uh, uh, without security label, so it's, we skip the Selenox for migration. The rest is fortunately uh, working. And the uh, missing features, uh, uh, well, the, the thing is that uh, our own tool sometimes uh, started to not work with containers because there are some uh, missing, like, uh, you know, uh, sockets were not exposed, uh, API not exposed, and so on, so this was, uh, quite an uh, unexpected challenge where we needed to enable something or implement something uh, differently. Uh, yeah, usually we found it only once QE was starting the test suite. Naming thing, uh, this is a funny story, only as a side story, is because of the uni uh, tools. Uh, originally the MGR ADM and so on was called uni ADM and uni uh, uh, MGR instead of MGR ADM, and the question was, when you uh, sell someone the subscription, or so this software, which is called SUSE Manager, and all the time they are working with something like, uh, which is called Uni and something, uh, how does, how, what message it does is sent? So this is not related to containerization itself, this is more like a dis dis distinction between upstream and downstream projects, especially when, uh, when you want to, uh, when downstream, so of course, is the one you pay for and how, what message you want to say. This was quite a, a heated argument, how much of the naming should, how much of the upstream should be preserved and how much not. The issue here also is that SUSE manager upstream, uh, downstream project is older than upstream project, so there are many of other utilities which are called RHN something or MGA or something and so on. So how much do we want to have uh, in a new product and so on. And then, uh, of course, once we were all ready, like uh, last, last month or two, there is some another things. Like uh, Podman, when it was upgraded to 4.8 with, uh, with the NetAWARC, or of course the Artwork DNS was missing. And, uh, the, and the NetAWARC, uh, we started to hit the hairpin problems. That means that from if you are, if you are using FQDN directly in the co in the product and want to you connect to this FQDN from container to itself, it does not work by default. So we need to instead of just saying oh change this configuration of Podman, we needed to change all of this to use localhost instead. And on the, some specific uh, places, we needed to do translations for the correct FQDN, and, and, and it was like, a, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, one, two week pro uh, work just for this naming. And then, uh, of course, once you start to deploying this, we were, you, uh, we from Hexagon team were used to work with it, but how do you, like, now you need to educate all of the other squads in the, in a, in a uh, SUSE manager team, uh, how to do, how to work with this? And turns out, turns out that we didn't think about it at the time, so we needed to do some more. Uh, well, maybe we think about this before, but not too too hard. So we needed to change some toolings, some end deployments. How to when you change some Java code, how to deploy it to the container without rebuilding everything, and so on. 
So we did. So this was taking also some time, uh, some tr training and presentations and so on. And of course, and it will even be with the supporters training and so on. And uh, this is also the missing features, or, or not, because also the, what the slide I was mentioning. This is uh, our customers, our users, are using all the features from all of the time and uh, for all of the places. And that's why we want to, to kind of limit here. And this was the headline is from a discussion we have on a Slack where, the cust where one of our I think supporters, supporter or uh, supporter engineer uh, said just said does this that we wouldn't believe our customers are using. So we will only see once we release what everything we will uh, we, we are missing can they use. Uh, just quickly on the, for the future, this is just two, two slides. Uh, proxy is basically on uh, or less stable. We have some tech demo removing the squid and doing the Apache caching and so on. So this is uh, really uh, basically stable proxy. And on the server, the next immediate steps is uh, to get rid uh, to split these uh, container in the more containers. We are starting with uh, salt master, I think, and and uh, database and uh, replace and replement all of the scripts and so on. So this is uh, still big uh, big task ahead of us, but uh, yeah, that's the that's the plan. Okay, and uh, this is all from from me. I don't know if there are any more questions. If the, if we have time, no, no time. Okay, so thank you very much. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>